Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be reviewing the 2020 Porsche Macan. The Porsche Macan is a loaner vehicle that's given to me by Porsche Carlsbad. My uh, 911 is currently due for its service routine. And I thought I'd take advantage of this opportunity, not only to review the car for you guys, but this video is gonna be segmented into two episodes. The first episode is gonna be a POV episode where I give you guys my first impression ride and review of the car. The second video that's gonna come after this is gonna be the PCM LCD dash, which will show you every single thing that's on the menu. And I'll give you a walk, or I'll give you a walkthrough of all the different settings and then how to use it. So stay tuned for that episode. But in the meantime, let's hop on in and take this baby for a ride. I forgot my GoPro at home, so I had to come back home, strap the GoPro on, and then start from scratch here. Anyways, uh, there's always something to forget, but here we are with this beautiful Macan. And I'm quite excited to talk about it, to be honest with you. The topics that we're gonna be discussing in this episode are gonna be things such as comfort, performance, styling, and does it feel like a Porsche? First things first, let's talk about comfort. With comfort, I'm talking about all the little details that are in this car, your navigation system, the, all the buttons that are outlined here in the center console, as well as the buttons on the dash. Not just necessarily sitting in the car and feeling comfortable, because yes, in that aspect, it's a very supple ride, very comfortable in that aspect, and the seats feel very, very quality and uh, for long journeys, this is a sports utility vehicle, and for long journeys, this car is definitely gonna perform. Creature comforts on this car are, are top spec, and but I don't think that this vehicle is top spec, meaning that it doesn't have every single option that uh, comes with this vehicle. This Macan is gonna be the base model, their Porsche is using it specifically for a demo vehicle, or in my case, they're using it for a loaner vehicle. So their loaner vehicles and demo vehicles are typically on the lower end, so they're not spec'd out all the way. But that being said, it still has all the creature comforts that you would pay a lot for in uh, previous generations and previous uh, uh, older year model cars. As an example, you get this gorgeous LCD dash that I've already reviewed for you guys. So in the next episode to come, I'm gonna have a full review of this LCD dash, which has all the bells and whistles that you could ever want. Inside of this LCD dash, you can control nearly everything. The entire car can be controlled directly from this. I think they went in similar fashion to like uh, the modern day uh, Teslas, and they've done a pretty good job. As an incentive for creating this, LCD dash, they've put it on all their vehicles, including the new 911, which I've already reviewed, uh, the 992. If you haven't watched that video, make sure you go watch the 992 video. And while you're at it, I'm not sure if you realize, and maybe this is the first video that you're watching in my channel, but I also have a 911 Carrera S. It's a 991 model, previous generation, and I invite you to go back and check those videos as well. It's something uh, you might enjoy watching. It's a bit more raw, and mechanical in terms of its functionality. And I kind of like it that way, but these modern cars, they're all electronic, as you can tell. So navigation aside, which does pr pretty much everything, it also has Apple CarPlay, which makes the comfort of your ride a whole lot better. The vehicle that I'm currently driving has park assist, and it also has a uh, lane change assist. But I find the lane change assist to be a little bit annoying. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn it on. And as soon as I tip over a little bit towards the left, if I'm not using my indicators, it's gonna make a little bong sound. The Macan that I'm driving right now has one of the coolest features 
um, and I wish my 911 had that but you can actually turn on the vents for the seat and and so right now I have the vent on at its lowest setting but I can feel cool air coming from the inside of the seat great on those hot summer days great on those humid days that it's not really that hot but it's very humid and you don't want to turn on the AC that's a pretty cool feature I wish I had that driver side you have all of your features and all your controls and for the passenger they have theirs now at the current moment I have uh, the left side and the right side synced up so if I change the temperature from the left it will also change it for the right as well to make everything even but that can be changed in the PCM and you can uh, have independent temperature controls for the passenger as well as the driver there goes that little sound not sure if you can hear it but anytime that I'm gonna go over the other lane without signaling it's gonna make a little bong sound so let me see if I signal and turn if it's gonna make that sound no it doesn't so that's pretty much to keep you straight in line in the middle of the lanes as opposed to weaving in and out it's good for safety but it can get a little bit annoying so I have it set up where I can turn it off right here and I'm gonna do that right now there you go so as far as speed is concerned we're gonna put this baby on sport mode there we go every single time this thing goes up in gear it makes a backfire sound whenever you have it wide open throttle so from the start over there till now I, I've pretty much pinned the throttle I've had it wide open and it seems to be handling pretty well it's not like ludicrous fast it's not super super fast it is an SUV it's probably weighing close to 4,000 uh, pounds and but it is a four-cylinder turbocharged engine for what it's worth and for how much it weighs and how small the engine is for an SUV it's got some get up it's got some go and it's not a slouch by any means being that it is on sport mode I'm not exactly sure once again what options come with this car but handling wise there is a little bit of body roll whenever I'm going left and right like right now there's body roll of course uh, it also has the paddle shifters you can uh, click on the paddle shifters at any time you want Alright, so we'll put it back to drive mode and put this back on automatic transmission for now but sport mode is pretty sporty but not exactly super fast but it gets the job done if you want a little bit more sportier characteristics characteristic on your SUV well there you have it and I like the fact that you can put this on manual transmission at any time and use the paddle shifters along with the sport mode in the twisty roads it, it will get a little bit more fun that way as far as aesthetics are concerned this car is definitely a Porsche you step inside of it and you can tell that you're inside of a Porsche you have the three dials that are classic on a Porsche you have your gauge clusters two of them are analog and the one on the right is all digital and I'm really happy about that because the newer generation 911s including uh, all the other vehicles that have come out recently all of them have been pretty much digital and I'm glad that this is not digital 100% I'm kind of old school I kind of like the fact that uh, there's a little bit of analog here but I like a vehicle that's a little bit more raw and more mechanical it's just a preference I guess in terms of seating position in terms of the steering wheel uh, how the dashboard is laid out and of course you have the sport chrono right at the top can you believe it on an SUV you got sport chrono sitting inside of this car is very reminiscent of what it would look like if you were inside of a 911 now as a 911 owner I can tell you that the only reason why I don't think I'm sitting in a 911 is because I'm very high up in a 911 you're literally sitting on the floor but it still has that that 911 feel it still has that Porsche feel now speaking of Porsche feel let's talk a little bit about that does it feel like a Porsche so anytime I think of a Porsche I think of a 911 and if you ask anybody what car Porsche reminds you of on average everybody's gonna mention the 911 so from here going up it definitely looks reminiscent of a 911 it definitely has the characteristic of a 911 but does it have the genetics of a 911 does it have the genetics of a Porsche um, 
it feels like one. It, the steering wheel definitely feels like one. Uh, it's got the Porsche badge in the middle, and when I'm sitting inside of it, it definitely feels like a Porsche. Performance-wise, for an SUV as large as it is, it is a base model, and this is a smaller of the SUVs. I have also uh, reviewed the larger version of this. Make sure to go check that out on the channel as well. But overall, I think uh, this car nails it in the comfort department, performance department, and overall, the fit and finish is top quality. I mean, obviously, because you're paying a good amount of money for this car, so it's gonna it's gonna feel and it's gonna look absolutely amazing. So I definitely approve of this car. It definitely has that Porsche feel. And uh, being that this is an SUV, uh, this is a great car to have for long road trips, taking it on the beach as I have at the moment, going surfing with it, going cross country road trips, and everything in between. And of course, you might wanna take it on the canyons, put on sport mode, and all that stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me for another episode. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you watching this all the way to the end. Uh, there's a lot more Porsche content on my channel, so go check that out. There's a playlist for all the Porsches, and I also uh, review my own 911, so make sure you go check that out. That's pretty much it for this episode. I will talk to you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.